everybody, Tech Transfers in the field today and we're about to do some Pettis tests. So a Pettis test, if you've never done one before, is something that you can do to check to see if the mites, the varroa mites that are in your colony are resistant to the chemical you're about to use to treat them. So this is something really great you can do to see if your treatments are going to work and be effective before you even put them on your hive. If you're worried about resistance to any of the synthetic chemicals, uh, this is something that you can do. So the first step is preparing the jars. We've got a, a bunch of jars right here in the field. We're gonna do three separate pettis tests on three separate colonies. Um, and to set up the jars, you need a jar with a screen lid, similar to what you'd use with a, the sugar shake monitoring method. So this has got a screen in it here, so that when you put bees inside the jar, they can't fly out. But any varroa mites that are on them can fall through this screen. Uh, inside the jar, you're gonna have a little sugar cube glued to the very base of the jar. That's just to give the bees something to munch on while they're in there. And then each one should have a cue card that has it labeled so you know which colony um, you took the bees from. And then on each card, you're gonna uh, staple a little piece of strip. Today in the yard, we are testing the efficacy of Apivar. So this is a small section of an Apivar strip that's stapled to that cue card. It's gonna go inside the mason jar. And when we put bees in here, they're gonna get exposed to that chemical and we can see if the mites that are also gonna be in here um, are going to succumb to that chemical or not. Um, in addition to that, you would want a couple repetitions uh, just to make sure that you can do this a few times to double check your results. And then in addition to the strip jars that you'll have prepared, we also have some controls um, just to see how much mite fall is naturally occurring in this population. So this still has a cue card with a label on it, but there's no strip stapled to the back. And that goes inside. Just like that. All right, so we're just about ready to gather some of the bees um, to put them in the jars for our pettis test. So you can see here, we've gone through this colony. Um, we found our queen. Just like doing any kind of monitoring, because we're gonna be scooping bees out of the brood chamber, we're gonna to have to find our queen first um, because you don't wanna accidentally scoop her um, and put her into one of those jars. So our queen is now caged. Um, so we're gonna, similar to any kind of monitoring, we're gonna take frames that have brood on them. We're gonna shake those into a bin and then scoop bees out into those pettis, um, pettis jars, pettis test jars. Um, in terms of the colonies you wanna choose for this, you do want a colony that has higher mite levels. To, to actually get an accurate test for the Pettis test, there needs to be quite a high infestation of mites. Otherwise, if you're only gonna find a couple mites in there um, when you do the Pettis test in, in kind of incomplete, um, you're not gonna get a very accurate uh, test of whether those mites are actually resistant to the chemical or not. For a colony that has a high mite infestation, we're generally looking for over threshold. So, over 3%, 3 to 5% is, is a good range. Okay, so now that we have our bees, we've got them back in the office now and we want to let them sit and be exposed to that chemical uh, for 24 hours. So we're gonna let them sit, and during that time, we wanna collect the mites that are dying after being exposed to that chemical. So we're gonna set up our jars on top of little sticky boards. Um, so we've got a Petri dish here. We've got drill, oh, or we've drilled holes in the side for ventilation. Um, and then we've cut out little uh, circles that are sticky that are gonna collect the mites that fall down. Um, now these are cut out of pre-made sticky boards, but if you just have a circle and you wanna cover it with Crisco or something else sticky, that'll work just as well. So we'll set that up. And then we're gonna take our mason jars that have the screen, remember, that the mites can fall through. And they fit nicely just to set up like that. So you can see the bees are getting a little bit of ventilation from having those holes in the side. I'll turn it so you can actually see some of those holes. We're gonna set the rest up here and then we're gonna leave them overnight. We're gonna leave them in these jars for 24 hours um, and see how many mites fall. 
All right, so now that we have all of our jars set up, we're going to leave them in a warm, dark place overnight uh, where they can just run around. The mites will succumb to the chemical uh, and fall onto the sticky board and we'll revisit them tomorrow after the, uh, the time period. Now, in terms of temperature, it should be around 22 to 29 degrees for an effective Pettis test in the room that you're keeping them. And it's better if they don't have a lot of sunlight or lights coming in because that can disturb them quite a bit. All right, so it's been 24 hours since the bees have been in these jars here. So to do the final part of the Pettis test, um, we're gonna have to pour in some alcohol and actually kill the bees to kind of get the, the mites that are left over. So <clears throat> over this first 24 hours, all of the mites that have come in contact with that strip and hopefully have been killed by the strip would have fallen down onto the little sticky paper that we have underneath. Um, so we're gonna have to count that first. Um, there might be some mites that are dead from the strip but still on the mites or on the bees bodies so before we actually pour the alcohol in there um, we're going to just bang the top of the the jar two or three times and kind of loosen any of those mites that are still alive um, because it's a little bit difficult to get that in the little petri dish um, it's good to have a piece of white paper with you um, and then you can kind of bang it over there and so you'll keep track of all of the mites that are on the sticky paper as well as the ones that fall down um, from banging it. So we'll do that now. So none actually came up there, so that's fine. Um, we're now going to pour in the alcohol. Um, remember that when you pour the alcohol in, if you wrote your, your numbers, your legend in with something like marker or pen, um, the alcohol might make that wash off. So it's better to either write in pencil or at least keep a, a legend of where the jars are so that in case you lose those, those labels, you, you still know which ones you're, um, you're using. So we're gonna pour some alcohol in and kill the rest of the bees. And then so we're gonna wait till those bees die from the alcohol and then we would count them just like you would a normal alcohol wash so we will kind of shake that in, in, in a jar that can be shaken a little harder and we will separate the mites from those bees and we'll count it so then the combination of what we had on this white paper um, on the sticky board and in, in in the jar would be the total number of mites um, that were in this Pettis test um, and we will calculate kind of how effective that treatment was um, by the mites specifically that had fallen in that first 24 hour period. Here is an example of a data sheet you can use during your Pettis test. We are now going to break this data sheet down further to explain how to calculate your results. Remember, we are testing to see how effective the chemical is at killing the varroa mites. If the percent mortality is less than 85%, that indicates the mites are likely showing resistance to the chemical. For each jar of bees that we tested, we will have to calculate the results. The first step to calculating the percent mortality is to calculate the total number of mites per jar. To do this, first we will count the number of mites that fell onto the sticky board during the 24 hour period. These are the mites that were killed by the chemical. Let's say there were five mites. Next, we will count the number of mites that fell onto the paper after hitting the jar. These are the mites that were killed by the chemical but still attached to the bees. Let's say there was one mite. Lastly, we will count the number of mites that were washed from the bees during the alcohol wash. These are mites that were not killed by the chemical. They were still alive and attached to the bees until they were killed by the alcohol. Let's say there were zero. So our total number of mites for this jar is six. Next, we will use this number to calculate percent mortality. If you look at column E, we are going to add our mites killed by the chemical, so columns A and B, and then divide that number by the total number of mites, and then multiply that by 100. This gives us our percent mortality, which in this case was 100%. That means that the chemical was 100% effective in killing the mites, and resistance is not an issue in this population of varroa mites. Let's do another example. In this case, only two mites were killed by the chemical, but we found eight mites in the alcohol wash. So our total number of mites is 10. When we calculate those numbers, that gives us a percent infestation of 20%. So the chemical was only 20% effective against the mites. 
This is far below that threshold of 85%, which indicates that this population of mites has likely developed resistance to the chemical. Lastly, don't forget to check that the chemical strips you use for your Pettis test are still within their expiration date. Expired chemical treatments can be less effective, which would result in an artificially low percent infestation.